Hi everyone, good evening. I hope everybody enjoyed the stories that you got to hear from the moms um, who have children that struggle with sensory processing issues and Julie Allen with her son with Down syndrome and even beyond just the gut brain connection in um, uh, Judy Wells's story with her son that had fatty liver. And you guys, I just want to preface this by saying that um, fatty liver is becoming more common in children. Okay. And so that's a scary thought. That's fatty liver is kind of like it kind of like they're have the liver of an alcoholic. And it's because of the increased amount of processed sugars that kids are eating today. So um, anyway, that is just an amazing story. So my name is Laura Dorsey. Um, a little bit of my background is I'm a physical therapist by trade. And just so you know, at any given time, my husband will walk through that door. So I just want to warn you. But otherwise, we should be quiet. So um, my background is in physical therapy. Um, I do have a degree in nutrition and exercise science from Kansas State University. Although I like to tell people that those two things um, led me to ignore Juice Plus for five years because I was in the ITC um, club. But once I did open up to it, I was fascinated by the research and just um, fascinated by the power of whole food nutrition. And so I got really, really intrigued by the gut and so have done a lot of research over the last couple years on the gut and the effects of our health. And so I was compelled to talk about the gut and the brain because I was recently connected with an occupational therapist who works with kids with sensory processing disorder. So, um, and to do some, some lectures on nutrition. And I know we have tons of kids on our team that have benefited from whole food nutrition and improvements as far as, you know, behavioral improvements, focus improvements, um, you know, doing better at school, sleeping better, all of these things. And so definitely through my research on the gut previously had been know that the gut plays a huge role, right? Um, but then as I do dove deeper into my research for um, this topic, it is fascinating, you guys. So I'm going to try to keep this at around 30 minutes. Um, it's hard because there's so much information. Um, but I'm also going to try to keep it to where it's understandable because it is kind of nerdy, but I'm going to try to simplify it as much as I can, okay? Um, so let me know if you guys have questions or if I'm being too nerdy, okay? So, um, but then at the end of when I'm finished, I will answer questions on here live if you have them. It's difficult for me to do while I'm talking, but at the end, I'll ask for questions. And if you don't feel comfortable asking questions at the end of this, then you can always um, ask them later, okay? Okay, so first of all, I wanted to start off by, you know, just, you know, educating you guys on the alarming trend that we have of the increased amount of brain disorders that we have in this country in particular. Um, when it comes to sensory processing, in the last 15 years, there's been a seven to eight fold increase in sensory processing disorder. Um, in the last 15 years, there's been a 55% increase in Alzheimer's related death. Okay, I, that is one that's near and dear to my heart because as a physical therapist, I treated the elderly for 13 years. And I know that probably half of my people had either Alzheimer's or dementia, right? Why is this on the increase? Parkinson's is on the increase. Anxiety and depression are on the increase. Um, and there's a lot of factors that go into that, but nutrition and gut health most certainly play a role, okay? Um, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about why, what is the reason why our brain is affected by our the the standard American diet, okay. So um, one thing that um, sorry, my, I'm I am going off notes and my computer is messing up. So okay, so one thing that has been common belief, you know, we live in the Western medical world, and we our Western medical approach to to the human body is very reductionist, right? So if you have something wrong going on with your brain, you go see a neurologist. 
If you have something going on with your heart, you go see a cardiologist. If you have something going on with your gut, you go see a GI doctor, right? If you have, you know, thyroid issues, you're going to go see an endocrinologist. If you have autoimmune disease, you're going to go see a rheumatologist. It's very reductionist, okay? And so when it came to sensory processing or Alzheimer's or any of these depression, all these issues, it was thought that there was something wrong with the brain, right? That is where it originated. Well, here's the deal, you guys. That old adage, that reductionist thought of the whole entire human body does not, it just doesn't work. You know, we are one, right? And what we put in our mouth does affect the rest of our body. And if you'll notice, especially with kids that have autism and sensory processing issues, they often have GI issues, right? And that is not a coincidence, you guys. It is related, okay? So that's really, really important to know. So, um, you know, these kids often have, you know, they are, they edge on the side of giftedness, but it's like they're trapped in this horrible cycle of anxiety and depression and sensory overload where they just can't really use their gifts. So, um, so here's what we're discovering, okay? So before it was thought that, um, you know, disease was all caused by our genes, right? So in the 1990s, we did something called, not me, but they, <laughs> researchers, did something called the Human Genome Project, okay? And they were researching genes to try to, you know, treat disease. They thought, man, if we could, we could figure out how to alter, or, you know, people's genes, we could really cure so many diseases. Well, what they found out was that our diseases don't matter that much, okay? The human genome is comprised of about 26,000 functional units, okay? A kernel of rice has 41,000. So a kernel of rice is more complicated than we are, okay, as far as our genetic makeup. The human microbiome has 100 million terabytes of functional genetic units. Terabytes. I didn't even know what a terabyte was until I researched this. That is equal to 1 million million. That's a lot, okay? So, and the cool thing about the genetic makeup of our microbiome is that it is plastic. So ours is more rigid, like it doesn't changes, change, okay? But the microbiome, its genetic makeup is more plastic, meaning it can be altered or changed for the good or the for the bad, right? Most Americans are altering it for the bad because of how we eat right? So isn't that fascinating? So actually 10% of our health is determined by our genes, about 90% by our microbiome. And so that's really important to realize. And the cool thing about that is that, you know, we used to think we, our, our DNA was our destiny, right? Because those genes can't be altered. Okay. But now we have hope because the genetic makeup and the environment in our gut with the microbiome can be altered, okay? So we have more control than we think we do. So that is really fascinating. So um, the other thing about the gut, the back, that bacteria in our gut, you know, most people in, in, you know, in the last, I don't know how many years, 10, 15 years, we've been like scared of bacteria, probably before that, right? But did you know that most of the bacteria on us, we have three pounds of bacteria in and on us, okay? Most of the bacteria are actually really good for us, okay? So I don't let my kids use hand sanitizers because they're not good for them, okay? We need to play in the dirt, right? You know, um, so most of that period bacteria is very important, okay? Because it um, actually produces vitamins like vitamin K and vitamin B, like the, some of the B vitamins in, in our gut. They're produced by the bacteria. Um, it helps protect against the harmful bacteria, which I'm going to talk a little bit more, which is really important. So if you don't have the good bacteria in your gut, you're letting the harmful bacteria take over, which causes a lot of problems, okay? It protects the intestinal lining, which um, if that intestinal lining is not protected, then you're going to have leaky gut issues, which causes a whole host of problems, which I'm going to talk about a little bit. It also regulates our immune system, 
okay? Which is really important because if our immune system is out of whack, if it's out of balance and when we have autoimmune disease or it doesn't function quite right, we get sick all the time. You heard Julie Allen's story with Cameron about how he was sick all the time. That was my son. He was sick all the time. Then, then you know, it's because the, the immune system isn't functioning properly, right? That is like the regulator of our entire body, okay, is our immune system. 80% of our immune system is controlled by the bacteria in our gut. Okay, so that's really important to know. And so we have to feed it right. The other thing about that bacteria is that it aids in digestion. Okay, and so the good bacteria like to feed off of plant foods, right? Sometimes when we introduce plant foods into a gut that doesn't have the right bacteria in it, we can be kind of gassy at first, right? Because we don't have the right bacteria in it until we get it back, okay, then the gas goes away, but, so that's really important, so if we're, a lot of times people that have sick guts have, also have vitamin and mineral deficiencies, because they're not breaking down their food properly, you guys, and so then they're not absorbing the nutrition that they need from those food, because they don't have, um, <laughs> Shelly's laughing at me for talking about gas, so, because they don't have the right bacteria to break down that food. So does that make sense? It's so fascinating. So um, individuals in particular, in particular with sensory processing disorder, also with Alzheimer's and often with depression and anxiety, have what is called dysbiosis, okay? Dysbiosis is when you have an impaired microbiome, okay? It means that the gut bacteria, the balance is off, okay? Kids with sensory processing, dis processing disorder and autism are, oft are born with it, okay? And so I'll touch a little bit on why um, that is on the increase, but um, so that is kind of how they're born with. And so this, they're set up from the beginning to not have the right balance in their gut and it's causing issues with their brain, which I'm going to touch on in a little bit. Um, so this plays a role in increased oxidative stress in the body which if you don't know what oxidative stress is, it's basically when we utilize oxygen or when we, have in, when we produce energy, we have offshoots called free radicals, and they go out, if they're not you know, offset by antioxidants that we have in food, then we, um, it, has, it causes damage to our body. It's how we age, okay? It's like basically the rusting system in our body. So just like you know, if you cut an apple open, and it gets exposed to oxygen, it turns brown, right? Well, the same thing happens in our body. We have aging, right? Well, these kids that have dysbiosis or somebody that has Alzheimer's that has dysbiosis or anybody who has dysbiosis, if you've got autoimmune disease, you've got dysbiosis, right? Most Americans have some amount, right? But these kids are just born with it, okay? They have massive oxidative stress going on in their body, so there's massive damage going on to their cells, okay? Um, it also causes um, impaired immune function, which will in turn cause inflammation, okay? So there's lots of inflammation going on in the brain, okay? There's also inflammation other places, okay? Just like um, Jennifer Starks was talking about how Reese had asthma, right? whenever she got him. You guys, this is not a coincidence that he also had asthma, okay? He had inflammation in other places too. Asthma is an inflammatory issue, right? My son used to have asthma. So that's not a coincidence. It all was coming from that little boy's gut and how toxic he was, okay? The other important thing to realize about the gut, okay, and this explains why kiddos with sensory processing disease disorder and autism, why they only want to eat a small amount of types of foods is because the, the bacteria in your gut will literally control what you crave, okay? And so because they have such dysbiosis when they're born, they only crave certain foods, and it's always the white foods, the french fries, the, you know, chicken nuggets, the, you know, macaroni and cheeses. That's what they want to eat because that is the type of bacteria that is present in their gut, 
okay? I used to crave sugar because I was feeding my gut sugar all the time, and Lord knows I wasn't eating enough fiber, right? But they are born with it, and so there's an actual physiological reason why they want to eat that food, and it's because of the, the microbiome that they have, the dysbiosis. So I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know. <laughs> So, so how does this dysbiosis affect the brain, okay? So your gut, just like Jennifer Stark says, you know, the, the gut is, is the second brain because there are millions of neurons in our gut, okay? And the bacteria in our gut affect the neuroendocrine system, which if you know what that is, that is like the bacteria in your gut actually produces hormones. So like serotonin, you know, and dopamine. Those, you know how Reese couldn't sleep, okay? Makes sense to me. His hormones were probably off, right? And your hormones are gonna affect your sleep. Um, serotonin, right, is a, is, a, is a hormone that's gonna affect depression and anxiety and things like that, okay? The bacteria in your gut affect the neuroendocrine system. It's really important to understand. And most of the serotonin and dopamine in our body are actually produced in our digestive system, okay? Um, that's why a lot of times people that have autoimmune disease will often be, it will be paired with depression, okay? That's not just because they have the autoimmune disease, it's because they have dysbiosis in their gut, okay? So the other thing is there's the, it affects the immune system, right? So 80% of your immune system lies in your gut, okay? So of course, you know, Cameron had a poor immune system because his gut health wasn't good, okay? Um, so if your immune system is off, you guys, then it's gonna cause rampant inflammation in your body because your immune system's job is to regulate inflammation. It's really important, okay? The other thing is, is that helps control the gut, helps control your autonomic nervous system, okay? So this is a really, like this is fascinating to me and the OT that I work with, she actually does neuro techniques to do, help um, get the vagus nerve, which is the nerve that goes from the brain to the gut, it is, that's the autonomic nervous system. It's the sympathetic and parasympathetic state that we're in. We're supposed to be mostly in the parasympathetic state, okay? We, when we go into the sympathetic state is like when we're, you know, being chased by a bear, right? Like we need to get away from the bear. That God gave us the sympathetic nervous system to, you know, our eyes dilate, our blood pressure goes up, you know, everything, our senses are heightened, right? And so that is important that we have that, but we have to be able to get back out of the sympathetic state and back into the parasympathetic state. Okay, well, the gut bacteria will actually stimulates that vagus nerve when it's in dysbiosis, it stimulates it in the wrong way. Okay, and so if you can think about it, kids with sensory processing disorder, what are their, they're super high, high sensitive to things, right? Their, their senses are always heightened. Okay, well that's because they're in the sympathetic nervous system state, all the, like most of the time, okay? And they can't get back into the parasympathetic state. Now the OT she works with are with neural techniques to get her patients back into the parasympathetic state but if that child's gut is still in dysbiosis, they're just gonna go back into the sympathetic state because it's being stimulated inappropriately. Does that make sense? This also makes sense to me with somebody who comes back from war, right? A soldier who is constantly in stress or even any of us who are stressed, okay? If we are experiencing a lot of stress, then we're constantly in that sympathetic state, right? And so we're being trained to be in the, in the sympathetic state, okay? So then what do, what do soldiers eat? It ain't good, right? It's MREs and lots of bland foods. So they come back and they can't get out of that sympathetic state, you guys. And they really need to, it really needs to be nutrition and some of these neural techniques to get them not just talking to a psychiatrist and medicine, okay? It's not gonna work. Like get them back into the parasympathetic state through nutrition, healing their gut, and doing some of these neural techniques, okay? It makes so much sense to me. I don't know if it makes sense to you, but it does make so much sense. So if we can fix the dysbiosis, 
and allow the bacteria to stimulate the vagus nerve in the right way, then they won't go back into the sympathetic state and be like heightened senses. I hope that makes sense, okay? The other thing about the dysbiosis in our gut is neurotoxins, okay? When we have too much of the bad bacteria in our gut, there are toxins that are released. And those toxins will damage the lining to our gut and cause leaky gut, okay? So what happens when we have this leaky gut? It also, these neurotoxins, you guys, when they, so I'll, I'll start with the leaky gut, okay? So what happens when we have leaky gut is those channels in our gut that are supposed to protect our body from the neuro, the, from the toxins in our gut, from things that come in, you know, really the digestive system is part of our outside, right? It's part, it's the outside. So that lining in the gut is protecting us from the outside, from toxins in the outside, toxins produced by the bacteria, toxins in our digestive system, toxins in our environment that make it our way in, okay? That, that lining is supposed to protect us from that. When we have dysbiosis and the wrong kind of bacteria in our gut, that lining gets damaged. And then we don't have that protective barrier. We develop some leakiness in the gut and toxins will come through that, that barrier and get into our blood. Okay, that is a problem. And kids that have sensory processing disorder, people that have um, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, all of these things, they have increased lipopolysaccharides in their blood. You guys, lipopolysaccharides are what are surround the bacterial cell, okay, in our gut. They get released, okay, and then they go into our blood. They're not supposed to. They're supposed to stay in our digestive system. But because the gut is leaky, it gets into the, the blood. And then it goes and it causes leakiness in the blood-brain barrier. And then that inadvertently causes inflammation, okay? That's a problem. Anybody who has leaky gut, system, um, in leaky gut syndrome will have increased lipopolysaccharides in their blood, okay? And so will kids with sensory processing disorder and Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. The research is showing that that is elevated and it's causing inflammation. That's why Alzheimer's has been found to be an inflammatory issue. Okay, it is an inflammatory disease. These kids with sensory processing disorders have inflammation in the brain, and it is because their gut is leaky and that is getting through there, things that are getting through there. The other reason why they have the increased inflammation is because when you have leaky gut and then you have proteins that are undigested that get into your gut and make it through that leakiness, let's take gluten for example. You guys, we do not break down gluten. Okay, we just don't. Okay, so undigested proteins that get into our small intestine and then make it through that leaky gut, our body reacts to them like a virus. Okay, so it causes our immune system to overreact. Okay, this is not just for somebody with celiacs. None of us break down gluten very well. So if you have a leaky gut, then and you're eating gluten, then it's going to cause a lot of problems, okay? It's the same thing with dairy. Dairy is very inflammatory. We don't break it down well. So then it gets into the gut, and if you have leaky gut, it's going to cause inflammatory issues, okay? Um, it's the same thing if maybe your child has, or you yourself, have um, reflux. My child used to have reflux, severe reflux, to the point where he would aspirate, okay? Okay. What were we doing? We were using the Western medical approach and using a Meprazole, 40 milligrams twice a day, okay? Was it working? No, no, he still sounded gurgly, okay? So this, the, the, all it was doing was making his acidity of his, di, of his stomach like, like more basic, right? Well, what happens when we do that? First of all, it, it changes your bacteria in your gut and second of all, it makes it so you don't break down proteins as well because you're supposed to break down proteins in your stomach. Your stomach acid is supposed to be like battery acid, okay? The omeprazole was making it more like vinegar, 
Okay, so I, so then you won't break down proteins very well. Then they get through that leaky gut and it causes an immune response. When you have an immune response, it causes increased inflammation, okay? So I hope this makes sense. Um, it It's kind of complicated, but it makes complete sense to me, okay? So I hope it makes sense to you. So um, why are we having so much more as far as kids? Why are kids being born with dysbiosis, okay? One is that your child will get your microbiome, okay? So it was once thought that the placenta in the amniotic fluid was sterile, like it was that they were protected. It's not true, okay? Your child gets your microbiome from the placenta and from the antibiotic, anti <laughs> amniotic fluid, okay? So that's really important. You know, I looked at pregnancy as an excuse to eat whatever I wanted, and I wish I wouldn't have done that. No wonder my child was so sick, right? So it's really important that we educate mothers how important their nutrition is while they're pregnant or before they're pregnant. You really need to start with the young girls because how they're being fed when they're young is determining how the health of their children, okay? That's one reason. Another reason is a third of all births in America are via C-section, okay? When the child comes through the vaginal canal, they get a certain type of bacteria that is the good bacteria that forms the right microbiome, okay? Kiddos that are born via C-section get the, a different, totally different bacteria that actually is the not the right, is not the good kind, okay? So, you know, I understand some people have to have C-sections, but we seem to be not always doing it for the right reason, and it's causing issues with kids' microbiome. Another is premature um, birth, and if they're in the hospital for an extended period of time and they're, wrong, they're around the wrong kind of bacteria, if a child has antibiotics, lots of antibiotics um, before the age of three, then it's damaging their microbiome. You are actually killing off the, bad, the good guys and the bad guys, okay? Um, so we need to fix their immune system so they don't need to be on so many antibiotics, but this is causing problems, okay? Um, the significant, obviously, the significant increase in processed carbohydrates in our diet is causing issues with our microbiome. And like I said, we're handing it down. We're not eating enough healthy fats. We are not eating enough fiber, okay? In paleo times, they used to eat 100 to 200 grams of fiber. The average American gets five. Five grams of fiber, you guys, it's terrible. It's pathetic. It's not okay, okay? I was in that category, I guarantee you about four years ago, okay? Um, the increased use of, of ibuprofen and Motrin, the NSAIDs, okay? Those um, medications damage your microbiome, okay? My husband used to pop them like candy because he had migraines, okay? Not good for his microbiome, you guys. Um, the, the increase in reflux medication and the absolute obsession with hygiene, okay? The, the whole Germex thing drives me crazy. People take full-fledged baths in the stuff, and you are damaging your microbiome. Clorox, all of the household cleaners, all of that stuff, you guys, you're killing off the, bag, the good guys, okay? And so going towards more natural cleaners, like I use vinegar and water a lot for cleaning, um, and just using regular hand soap and not being so wacky, and may, let your kids play in the dirt. Okay, because they need to get dirty. Okay, so those are the reasons. Okay, so so what can we do? Well, here's the problem. Okay, if you have a kid with sensory processing disorder, they crave white food, right? And so I could be on here and say, you know, you need to increase healthy fats. You need to eat, feed them prebiotic foods. How about asparagus, leeks, and, you know kombucha and kimchi and all this stuff and you're going to look at me and be like there is no way that my child with sensory processing disorder is eating leeks right i don't even eat leeks right <laughs> so it's not happening you know but we have to find a way to get it into their body okay and we have to find a way to get those prebiotic fibers into their digestive system so we can try to change their microbiome 
the prebiotic fibers, you guys, are what make it into the large intestine. You do not digest them, okay? It's the same thing with, um, oh, why can't, why can't I think of it? Um, certain starches, they don't get digested, okay? And so they make it into the large intestine and they will um, feed the good bacteria, okay? It's really, really important that we find a way to do that. But unless you're going to feed your child leeks and asparagus and all these wonderful prebiotic fibers, you need to find an easier way, right? Well, this is where we enter Juice Plus, okay? And we are not saying that Juice Plus is the cure to all disease, okay? But I'm saying nutrition absolutely has to be part of your plan. And if it isn't, then you are missing the boat. And the problem is, is that we go into the, you know, Western medical world and everything's reductionist, right? So if you have something wrong with your brain, here's a pill for that. If you have something wrong with your heart, here's a pill for that. If you have something, you know, if you have irritable bowel syndrome, well, let me give you a pill for that, okay? Those, all of those diseases that we are diagnosed with are all symptoms, they're all symptoms of an underlying problem. And a lot of times they're symptoms of an unhealthy gut, okay? Because about 80% of our diseases are coming from our gut, okay? So that's, you know, unless it's some genetic disorder that we're born with, you know, like muscular dystrophy or something like that, most of the time it's a symptom that you got something going on in your gut, okay? So that's why we have to approach it with nutrition. It's so important. And what do I mean by nutrition? I'm talking about plant food, you guys. I'm talking about plant food and fiber. It's so important. The average American, I know Jennifer referred to it, you need seven to 13 servings every day. If you have disease or a sick gut, you need more. If you're an athlete, you need more. Okay, well, good luck with that. Nobody's going to be able to eat seven, seven to 13 servings of raw fruits and vegetables every day. And especially if your child is eating french fries all day, right? And that's one of the three foods he'll eat. So how do you get it in there? Okay, the average American gets 1.5 servings every single day. That is a CDC number, and that includes ketchup and french fries. Okay, so if you got a child that's eating french fries all day, according to the CDC, they're doing pretty good. Okay, <laughs> okay, so what is Juice Plus, you guys? Juice Plus is literally fruits and vegetables in a capsule or a chewable. That's what it is. What they do is they control the produce from the time it is planted in the ground until the time is harvested at vine ripening, which is really important because our food in the grocery store is not vine ripened, okay? It is picked way before it's ripe. It's shipped to us, and then it sits in the grocery store, and then it sits on our counter until we eat it, right? And it's so it's never even allowed to form the right nutrition, and then, then it sits and it loses nutrition, okay? This is vine ripened. All the produce in Juice Plus is vine ripened, which is so key. So that means you're getting that produce at its peak peak um, point of nutrition. Um, so the, the other thing to, to know is that it's got this nutrition facts label, okay? That means it's food. The FDA recognizes Juice Plus as food. This is what you would see on a bag of carrots, okay? You guys, you do not want to be like, oh, well, you know, I could just go to Walmart and get, you know, something at Walmart for much cheaper. Well, I'm telling you what, you have no idea what's in that thing on the shelf at Walmart, right? Because supplements are not regulated by anybody. There's, they are not regulated. You have no idea what you're putting in your body. So not only could you maybe be putting toxins in there in a leaky gut that is not, you know, protecting your body from the toxins. So that's not a good idea, right? Um, but also, you know, it just doesn't make sense. Like our body is supposed to get its nutrition from food. A single apple has 12,000 phytonutrients in it, right? So why would a multivitamin with, you know, 30 vitamins and minerals make sense when you have 12,000 phytonutrients in an apple, okay? It does not make sense. Plus, I already talked to you about the bacteria in your gut is what breaks down food, right? That bacteria in your gut is not breaking down a multivitamin. So guess what happens? 
You just poop and pee it right out. So you are literally wasting your money. I tell people if they're like tempted to go buy something at Walmart, I would rather you not do anything than buy something at Walmart, okay? So just don't do that. I'm just telling you. <laughs> so um, the other thing about Juice Plus is it's got this NSF label, okay? So that's really important because that means that they're paying for a third party to make sure that there's no herbicides, no pesticides, no fungus, no bacteria, no yuckies in it, okay? So you can trust what's in here because it's been tested three times before it makes it into the capsule. Super Super important, okay? So when you take the trio of capsules, you get three, 30 different fruits, vegetables, um, berries, and some grains, okay? And there's actual like 20 years of research on Meridian Energy, you know, to decide what he put in here. And so that is really, really important, okay? The other thing about Juice Plus that impressed me the most, first of all, the one thing is that there's no warning label, okay? You guys, if you read the side of a Centrum Silver, you'll see that it says may cause osteoporosis. Long-term use may, may cause osteoporosis. Well, that's great. No thanks, okay? There's no warning label on Juice Plus because it's food, okay? You can take this, please do, when you're pregnant. It's the absolute best prenatal there is. Okay, and it's the only thing that you would call a prenatal that has had any sort of research on it. Okay, and that is what impressed me the most was the research. And so the research shows us that when you take these capsules and you put it in your body every single day and you give it time because it is food, it is not a medication, that it helps reduce your inflammation. Remember what we talked about, that these brain issues are inflammatory problems, okay? It helps balance your immune system. Remember what I talked about with the immune system? Super important, right? It helps support the cardiovascular system. So all of that nutrition that you're putting in your body is getting to every single cell in a more efficient manner because the blood's getting there and the blood is what carries that nutrition, right? It helps protect your DNA. It helps reduce oxidative stress. Right? So these are all really important aspects. The research show us there's 36 double-blind, peer-reviewed, gold standard research studies of Juice Plus in the human body. That is so impressive. And it is not done by, you know, Cleveland College here in Kansas City. It is done by Yale and Vanderbilt and UCLA and University of Graz and Newcastle and all of these amazing Florida, University of Florida, University of Maryland. You know, these places are not um, MD Anderson Cancer Center. These places are not putting their name on some, you know, Joe Schmo product, okay? Um, they would, they have a lot of money at, you know, at risk. And so they're not going to do that, okay? So that is really important. So here's the capsule. This is the micronutrition that you need to get in your body to help reduce inflammation, help balance your immune system, all of that stuff, okay? Now you heard of some of the kids' stories that were on the capsules only, and then when they added the shakes, it was a game changer, okay? And that is what I say. One shake a day is a difference maker, two shakes a day is a game changer, okay? And you guys, it's so much more than the carbohydrates, fats, and proteins that are in here. People typically look at food and they look at this upper part of the label and they want to know how many carbohydrates, how many sugars, how many calories, all of that stuff. And I'm like, it drives me nuts. You need to know the ingredients in the food, okay? Like whenever we turn something around, quit looking at this part of the label and you need to find out the ingredients, okay? Because when there's you know, high fructose corn syrup and sugar and artificial sweeteners like sucralose and stuff like that. You guys, those are not good for you, okay? The game changer part of these shakes, not only is it 15 more plant foods like spirulina and yucca and broccoli sprouts and radish sprouts and all of these like pumpkin and pomegranate and these wonderful foods, the game changer is the fructo oligosaccharides, okay? And you're like, fructo oligo what? Yeah, like what is that word, okay? Those are the prebiotic fibers I was talking about, okay? That's why these are a game changer, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm such a firm believer in this. 
Juice Plus is getting ready to release a study on the effects of the capsules and the complete on the microbiome. And I am so excited about that study. And I know that it is because of the fructo oligosaccharides that are in here. It's the prebiotic fibers that are making it into your, into your large intestine and feeding the good bacteria and literally changing the microbiome. It is a game changer. Okay, so one shake a day, difference maker, two shakes a day, game changer. The other thing about it is those fibers helps balance your blood sugars. So when our blood sugars are stabilized, not only will we not crave sugar, okay, because when we have those dips is when we crave sugar, but also our, we will be able to think more clearly, okay, because spikes in our blood sugar cause even more oxidative stress and inflammation. And that's gonna also happen in our brain, okay? So these shakes, you hear those stories of those kids that started doing one to two shakes a day, and that's what I was telling Nicole the day. I didn't even know her son was autistic, you guys, until she broke down and told us about everything. Was, but she didn't even think about this stuff being able to help him. And we, I, we were like, oh my gosh, like get as many of those shakes in him as you can, okay? It's such, and plus they're delicious. Now, if you're like kind of, um, hi Mimi, hi Caden, if you're kind of wondering, you know, how do I get this into my child? You know, my child is so picky, they've got sensory processing issues, there's ways to ease it in there, okay? And so we will work with you individually on helping you work it in, okay? Whether it is we have to break up the chewables in little bits and kind of start little bits at a time. Maybe you freeze the chewables. Maybe you just pinch them together. Maybe you put them in warm water and they and they melt. Maybe you do like Nicole did with her son who didn't like the chewables. She just put the, the powders in his almond milk and he drank it, right? Here's the deal. It is so important that we find a way. Okay, I know Jennifer, whenever she added the complete for Reese, she tried a full shake the first time and he launched it across the room. Okay, he was not having it. But she slowly added more and more into his drink and eventually he started be drinking the whole thing. Okay, and she even told me today on the, on, the, on the phone, I didn't even know this, that she started compromising, look Reese, if you want your french fries, you gotta drink a shake first. <laughs> So if you want to use the bad foods as an incentive, whatever it is, find a way. I don't care. Just get it into them, okay? We are not saying that you absolutely have to change everything at first, and you probably shouldn't if you have a child with sensory processing. Now, if you're an adult with it more is like issues like, you know, early set, you know, some Alzheimer's or inflammatory issues, you have Parkinson's or autoimmune disease or depression or things like that, I'm gonna tell you, go be a hair, okay? And come with us and do the Shred 10 program because you have the ability to decipher that, okay? But if the child with sensory processing, if you try to rock their world and change everything at once, they are going to completely rebel. Right? You know this if you're a mom with sensory processing, um, a child with sensory processing issues. So we work it into them, okay? You don't have to change everything at once. Now, the more changes you can try to make, um, like I know Nicole's done a really good job of taking gluten out of his life, okay? The better, okay? There's a couple things I say are non negotiables. One is the sugary drinks, okay? Pop, Gatorade, fruit juices. Just quit buying them, you guys. Eventually, they will quit like going crazy for them, okay? And I always say short-term pain equals long-term gain. That would be one thing that I just got rid of, okay? That is a non-negotiable in our house is you don't eat food, you don't drink drinks with sugar in them, okay? So, um, the, the ten, Jennifer, the 10 day, sh the shred 10 is safe for everybody, okay? And when somebody that has thyroid issues has gut issues, okay? That's where we most commonly go wrong in this country is we treat the thyroid, right? When the thyroid is being attacked by your immune system. And where is that coming from? The leaky gut, okay? So the shred tin is safe for somebody with cancer, somebody with diabetes, somebody with thyroid issues, somebody with... I don't care who it is. It's somebody, if you better do it when you're pregnant, it's the most important time because those toxins are going to your baby, right? So get them in the toilet, 
is what I say. <laughs> okay, so you guys, I hope that helps. We, um, I don't know if I covered everything. I tried to cover a lot. But do you guys have any, in particular, any qu any more questions for me that I can answer? Um, that, you know, we are just here to give you hope. That's the thing that I love about, about and, you know, nutrition and what I said about the microbiome and how it can change and how it's plastic. And um, is that, okay, is it worth it to take the gummies if my kid is, yes, I just said we have to work it in. So they're going to still eat the gunk. Here, it's more important, right? Because they, they're not getting any fruits and vegetables. So the chewables is how we work it into them. And the research on the children's health study says that over time, right, they start to crave more fruits and vegetables, which is part of Jennifer Stark's story, which God love her. She had two kids, six and four, which normally I'm, I had to threaten my kids to not come out when I was doing this tonight. And they're 13, 11 and eight, right? So, but part of her story is Reese had severe aversions to anything that was wet, like an apple was no way, right? And eventually he started asking for apples. He asked for a tomato one time, to eat a tomato, just like an apple, okay? So if you're putting those chewables into their body and hopefully we can work this into them, you're feeding the bacteria in their gut, finally, some plant food, then they start to crave it because that good bacteria comes back and that good bacteria tells their brain to crave fruits and vegetables, okay? There's research behind this. It is so important, but we have to make one simple change like Jennifer is saying at a time to slowly do it because they will, they will totally reject you, okay? So absolutely, it is so important. It's that much more important for somebody who's not eating it because they're not getting it. And you guys, the body cannot function without it. It's just, it's it's God's food. God meant for our body to function with it. And, you know, I don't want you to just think about the sensory processing issues. The fact that they're eating carbs and junk puts them at more risk for things like fatty liver disease, like Judy Wells' son. More risk for things like cancer. More risk for things like diabetes heart disease, dying at a younger age because they're not getting the nutrition that their body absolutely has to have. So I hope that makes sense. Um, raw milk is, uh, obviously it has the bacteria in it. You know, you're obviously going to want to be real careful about where you buy that. But in my opinion, why do it? Okay. I would just say no dairy. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, if, it, if, if it's like a, you know, not as bad as the other, but still bad because it has the proteins in it that are damaging for our body. Okay. So just, just stay away from dairy. Okay. Feed the good guys and do fermented vegetables or something like that for, um, bacteria. Okay. Does anything, anybody else have any more questions? These are great. Um, I'll wait here a second and see if anybody types one up. And if not, you guys can always type them. If you keep typing them, I will see them. They'll pop up on my notifications. Um, and you guys, we have, um, I kept this Facebook Live open till Thursday. So if you guys yourself um, were thinking of somebody uh, that really needs to hear this information, please invite them, okay? That's what this is all about. This is why we are so passionate about Juice Plus and Whole Food Nutrition is because we see the stories that happen every day whenever people start finally feeding their body right. And so um, what do I suggest for toddlers instead of cow's milk? Um, water. Water and smoothies, okay? When they're 10 months old, they can start drinking this. And then water and then feed them whole foods, put capsules in their food, okay? So, um, yeah, they don't need dairy milk. That's been pushed on us because there's a little funding behind that, okay? So, um, anyway, any, I've, there's no more questions. You guys can keep asking them. I'll, I'll check it. Um, but just know that we love you guys. Um, we love everybody. We just want to help everybody. And just know that there's hope in whole food nutrition um, there's hope and, and awesome people with holistic techniques um, that we can help you function better and your child function better and every single person on this planet function better. So, all right, love you guys. Have a good evening and we'll talk later.